and you guys do a great job putting together some of these unique ETFs. But to my point sort of in the intro is, what makes you guys convinced that the WFH trade is not O-V-E-R, if you will? Yeah, well, we've certainly got into an environment where we've seen days where it's a work from home trade winning versus the reopening trade. But we need to take a step back and think about this pandemic causing societal transformation change. And one of those in particular is the greater acceptance that society has toward remote work and the ability that technology allows for people to work from home or wherever that may be. So this ETF is constructed with the 40 stocks that we believe give investors the best exposure to the potential for work from home to continue uh, to uh, propel and actually not just be a fad. As we know, the reopening process has been choppy and will continue to be choppy. So I think companies yeah. and employees are learning that if they can find a way to be productive, whether that's being partially at home or in the uh, full time in the office and then sometimes at home, that you need the technological pillars that are going to help power that going forward. Okay, I'm going to channel the inner genius of my good friend and colleague, Tyler Mathis, one of his famous two-parters. Are you ready, David? What ready. are the biggest holdings? What are the biggest holdings in that ETF? And are they overvalued given that so many people have been piling into what seems to be the same trade for a long time? Well, I think I think that's a reasonable question. Investors should understand uh, what the valuations are of this of this particular ETF, of course, versus the broader market. But what's interesting, if we look at the top 10 holdings, some of these, to your point, are names that you know. You'd expect Zoom to be in there. Zoom is a stock that's up 280% on the year. It's the poster child for work from home because investors flocked to it early because people were using it not just for work, but also to communicate uh, with their families and such during the, the uh, worst of the pandemic. But there's other names in there like Twilio. This is a name that people uh, might not know. What they actually do is provide infrastructure for companies to provide text messages and calls uh, as part of their service. So, for example, New York City's tra contact tracing system is powered by Twilio. Uh, other names in, uh, in the top 10 holdings are going to be names like Okta and Fortinet. You know, these are cybersecurity names with tons of data floating around the globe with employees in disparate locations because much of it is being stored in the cloud. Cybersecurity threats are going to be on the rise. So the cyber names uh, are required to, to sort of be in a basket that's representative of, of the work from home theme. Uh, but when I look at valuations, okay. here's what's interesting, Brian. If I compare it to the NASDAQ, NASDAQ's price to sales at 4.4 times. This particular ETS at 2.8, much actually more closer to the broader market. So if you want to make the argument that stocks are overvalued as a group, which certainly could be a reasonable one, even though we believe that there's momentum for stocks to continue to go higher. This, these particular stocks are actually not any more overvalued uh, than much of the broader market, and they're actually yeah. uh, valued at, at less of a multiple than the NASDAQ. Well, I, I, I want to steal thunder from a coming guest, Eric Johnson, the Cantor, who's got an amazing stat on just how big big tech really is. Maybe does that mean, David, to you, that the big tech stocks that have been powering pretty much everything are wildly overvalued? Well, I think, again, I, there is most definitely an argument to be made that tech is overvalued. Uh, wildly overvalued, uh, I don't know if we're quite there yet, but if, if we can, uh, the work that I've done is if you compare technologies, price to sales or price to earnings relative to its history, it's definitely in the 95th to 99th percentile, depending upon your favorite valuation metric. So it is by any, no means cheap. But what we think is interesting is investors maybe can start thinking about, again, not just piling into the trades that have been working. We know big tech has had exceptional run, but many of these names in the work from home ETF, uh, some of them are, are household names that you might know, but many of them are, are not. Because what's interesting here, you know, again, this theme that we're seeing begin to play out in what we believe has lasting power. Because if we look at the PwC uh, CFO survey, 54% of, of CFOs said that for jobs that allow it, they're going to continue to make them. Uh, have the ability to actually work from home or work remotely. And employees are actually uh, finding that their productivity, uh, you know, barring childcare issues and things like that, actually can increase if they have the flexibility to work where they want. We know, so we know there's two levels here. One is, the, of course, the top line yeah. difficult uh, health crisis that we're seeing. Plus, if we take a step back and say, what do employees really want? They want flexibility to be productive wherever that may be.